All right, so some people, for some reason, I'm like when I do my family stories. And I guess you all don't know completely who is in my family. And I thought, okay, somebody said, can you pick another one of your family members to talk about? I talked about my brother who grew up in Chicago and thinks he's a hillbilly, talks like a hillbilly, you know, hey, how y'all doing, you know, you Yankees down there. You grew up in Chicago. Where do you get the accent? Where do you have the balls to pull off that accent? You were there, you were here until you were like 13 years old. What are you talking about? You didn't know, you didn't go over there when you were four. Then I would understand it. Um, yes, I do have other relatives. Not many anymore. <laughs> They're all dead, uh, which is, always, like I said before, if you're going to lose a lot of family, it's fun at least. The only silver lining is you get to tell people that and see the look on their face when they're all excited about Mother's Day or Father's Day or something like that. It's the best thing, and especially if you lie about just lie and say they died together and on Christmas. It totally ruins that person. I've done it before, you know, as long as it's a stranger or something like that. So, you know, what are you going to do with your parents for, you know, Fourth of July? Is your family coming over? What's going on? Oh, oh, my family, yeah. I don't have any. Yeah, my mother, my father, and my dog died on Christmas, you know, en route to bringing, I mean, they'd just been at the hospital for orphans, delivering some gifts, and they were coming home, and uh, yeah, they all died. But how are you? I I'm sorry. No, you couldn't have known. Ah! Ah! Oh! <laughs> it's just kind of fun to do. So uh, I thought I would pick out somebody to talk about, and who I'm going to talk about is the only person I grew up with, like literally grew up with way too fucking long. And that's my brother. I'm just going to say his name because there's a thousand of them again. His name is John. John, I don't even know if I've told these stories before. So if I have, forgive me. Okay, here's how he came to be. Um, when I was very, very, when I was like five years old, I'm adopted, as you know. I, I was in. I was in the family. I'm good. I thought I was going to be the only one. And then my mother had an idea that she wanted another kid. And I'm like, why? Why? I had a sister who passed when I was five. And, you know, whatever. She died. And so then my mom started looking into adoption again. Which is, at, even at that point at five, I'm like, you see me. I'm the kid who you yell at constantly for throwing things out my top window and laughing about it. She would constantly be picking up my sandals, my toys, because I would open my bedroom window and throw them out at my neighbors or at anything I could see. And she would, if I, the one word I heard from my mother over and over again, and I would have a billion dollars, even for a nickel, every time she said it was, why? You just, <laughs> why? Fucking, you know, you try, you threw a, you threw a fucking, you know, bottle rocket at a neighbor's cat. Why? Why did you bake a freaking Betty Crocker cake badly, dump it on a neighbor's windshield of their car, and then just walk away? Why? Why? I actually did do that. Those are two things I did do. Um, a monkey, calm down. I didn't hit the cat. I didn't get anywhere near it. My aim is horrible, even when I pee. So around the time I was, yeah, five, maybe because of the trauma that happened with her, she decided to look into adopting another child, which I was kind of for, because the idea of a younger brother or sister sounds good at the time, especially a younger brother. So I just remember one point being at a, oh no, a friend was at my house and I was teaching her because I just learned how to ride my, ride my bike and I was all proud of it, like, you know, this chick. And so she comes over, I'm like, yeah, I'm totally gonna teach you how to ride a bike today. It's fine, even though I'm still like wobbling and everything. Trust me, it's it's working. Um, so she came over and the next thing I know, my mother and my father rush out. Your friend has to go home. We're going somewhere far away. Why? What's happening? What's going on here? I thought maybe they finally, the gig was up. They knew how evil it was going to be. And I was going to be taken to a cornfield and shot. I just thought that's the way it was going to go. Cornfield close. We went out to probably where the fuck the internet Eric here lives. Some but fuck universe far away. I remember the car ride was forever. It was starting to get like dusk out and I'm like, or dawn, dusk. Dusk. It was getting night, you know, and I'm like, where are we? It was like three o'clock in the afternoon when we left here. Where are we going and what the hell is happening? And then my mom's all excited as mothers are to be and just like, uh, we have found a child who are we going to foster and probably is going to end up being your brother. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to be the judge of that, obviously. You're not going to do it without my approval. And of course she did say that. Now, in hindsight, I think they would have chosen him anyway, but I kind of felt like, you know, again, like Simon Cowell, like I'm going to get to choose you know you know you you make it to the next round um like i always tell my eldest brother when he calls like listen you weren't adopted why do you keep calling up here looking for your mother let me know when you find her bye i made the cut you didn't go away your contract was not renewed goodbye later woo uh so i thought i'd have some say so and she made it seem like i would but i'm pretty sure now it was just to you know placate an angry child so we go out to this house all i remember is in the 
burbs, it was a big house, and a frazzled woman answered the door who looked like she had had plenty of kids, who just looked like she had seen too many children. She didn't want to see any more children. I didn't understand it. Her hair was kind of stringy. She was young. You could tell she was like 35-ish, 36-ish, but she just had it. She had like a towel over her. I'm sure she had baby vomit on her. And she's like, hi. She's one of those. She's like out of it and whatever. Are you here to see the kid? Great, great, great. I mean, we get the other five subs, right? <laughs> trying to do a good thing in foster people. I don't even have my own kid coming. I don't know what's going on Help me. Just take me away from here. Leave the, we'll leave them all. We'll turn the gas on and pretend we don't know. So um, <laughs> we walk into, the first time I saw my brother, we walk into a kitchen and of course he's eating. When I tell you my brother can eat, please, he's tiny. He is five foot nothing. I mean, seriously, like five foot two. I've always called him a midget, but I think he, you know, technically not a midget by like two inches. But he can put what he can eat baffles me i am not shitting you if you sat down with my brother he would order like five huge plates of everything eat it and still want two hours later i'm hungry where do you put it do you have a false leg where the fuck do you go i'm way bigger than you and i couldn't eat that i'd vomit as soon as i ate half of that shit but of course first time i see him he's you know uh god was he a couple like a year not even a year old at that point he's like ah! and he's gotten he's just eating shit just eating shit just throwing on his face and loving it and i'm just like Okay, there's another one, right? Uh, this is this, this little this little Hispanic child. We're not. Can we seriously listen? I just want to keep it white. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and um, he was a beautiful kid, which got me got on my nerves even more and continued to throughout life. He is a Kodak moment. You ever know one of those people? Like I see horrible pictures of myself, even on here on YouTube. I don't want to watch sometimes. Him doesn't ever take a fucking bad photo ever. It's just like there's always a halo over him and just like. Like, just since he was a kid, he was fucking cute and annoyed me. There's some pictures where I look like I have Down syndrome as a kid. Like, I really do. Like, I'm like, just, I'm all, I look gimped out. I really do. There's not one of my little brother. It always looks like, you know, just, oh, was he in a commercial? Oh, he's just so cute. He's beautiful. a good looking. Oh, fuck off. He's going to get acid in the face sooner than you know it. So don't get too happy. And so, um, go in there, see him. Right away, they have to talk details about the money. Maybe they bought him. I don't fucking know. I used to tell my brother forever that when he'd ask, but where, where did I come from? We got you from the side of the freeway. They were bored. And your mother, your biological nightmare mother, was some Mexican woman selling oranges who didn't speak any English. And you should be grateful to be in this country. Now, after me, I pledge allegiance to the flight. You better fucking do it. Now, <laughs> I would tell him that he, you know, he found him by the side of the freeway. I think he even asked my parents at some point. Stop telling him that. Stop, that is not true. Stop telling you. Why, why oranges? Why do you always have them selling oranges in your bizarre, bizarre lying scenario? What is wrong with you exactly? So um, I saw him and then we had, you know, I had to disperse and I was taken to play with the other children. Let me tell you about the other children she had in that house. There was one who was about six foot four. I'm not even kidding you. This kid was massive. He had to be 12 or 13, but he was slow, but he was one of those huge, like hillbilly, huge, slow, like you know, like you see him in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he kills people and just goes <clears throat> afterward. Like one of the, I was scared to death of him. He was just skulking around the basement or the play area, the place where he kills people. Then there was this little Nordic blonde boy who to this day, I still remember him because he got on my fucking nerves so much. He said, hi, are you going to play? Let's go downstairs and play. I got new Hot Wheels. We can play with my Hot Wheels. And I was like, I don't want to play with your fucking Hot Wheels. Let's play Kill You. You want to play that game? Turn around, I'll show you how it's played. I'm going to pick up a shovel. I was stuck with him for an hour, and I remember he started to argue with me. He's like, so you're here to get um, whatever his name was. Uh, uh, like they didn't have a name for him. I think they called my brother It or something. You're here to get It. I'm like, uh, his name is John John. I don't know why I picked that name. I remember there was a kid in my school who was like one of the baddest kids in school, and I was friends with him, of course, and I liked his name, and his name was John John, or everybody called him John John. His name was John, and I'm like, his name is John John, and the kid right away goes, no, his name is Pablo Fransco or whatever the fuck like that. And I'm like, no, his name is John John. No, it's not. It's probably, I'm like, you have no say so when they think because we're taking him. No, you're not. Yeah, we are. Why do you think we're here? We're arguing while they're, you know, while my mom's paying like $5 for him. <laughs> so we just continue to argue and eventually we get all the gear or we're taking him out and he's happy. He cried only when he didn't have a bottle of food in his mouth. Just cried. Until you give him food, he's happy. Um, so I end up taking him home. Oh, and on the way out too, I could see the little evil like Nordic kid's face. They're like, where's he going? I'm like, oh, wait, you'll never see him again. <laughs> so, you know, at that time, I'm like, this is cool. I have a little brother. I got to hold him. He was so cute. 
until he started to shit and cry. I could smell poop in the car. I'm like, wait, we had to pull over and change him. I'm like, what is changing? He's like, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, Jesus, take it back. Turn around, turn around. He's defected. Turn around. Let's go, let's go. I don't want to. Okay, I didn't. Um, you know, everything seemed good until my brother started to learn to crawl. And when I say crawl, it wasn't the usual crawl. He was an acrobat. Like, I, like I said, I don't even know if I've told these stories before. I think I might have. Like, he had, he got so bad at one point. We brought him home. People loved him, blah, blah, blah. And we eventually found out he could get out of anything. You could lock him in a cage. And John and, my, and John John would be scurrying about later on. You're like, how the fuck did he pick a lock? What the fuck is happening? But it got so bad to the point. He's like, not even, maybe about a year at this point, 10 months old. They had to get a net to put over his crib because he was crawling out of his crib, crawling down the stairs. I think he's from the devil or something like that. How do you do that with barely any limbs? Crawling down the stairs and wandering through the living room in the middle of the night looking for food at that age. It's impossible, but it happened. So they put a net over his thing. One night I'm woken up to screaming and crying. Like, ah, ah, ah. He sounded like a trapped like ferret or something like that. I don't know. Like, ah. My mom runs in the room. His room was right next to mine. Little did I know I'd have to share for like the you know, a good portion of my life. At this point, they were, he was in my parents' room in a crib. I, it never occurred to me, wait, wait a second. Wait a second, where's he gonna go after that? No, he's not coming in here. No, I swear, I will burn his bed down. No, no, he's not. He did. Um, but he's screaming and wailing and all this, and I run into the room. My parents are already in there. He is hanging by one leg, one fucking leg from the net. He somehow maneuvered the net all the way up slid his little like snake-like body out of there, but got caught on the crib and the net by his ankle and he's hanging upside down. And I'm just sitting there like, leave him. Lee, he'll get tired crying. Just leave him. Just leave But What are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? So um, it got worse from there. Like he got what we went to Great America one time. I thought we were gonna have a great time. Kids in Great America. It's like an amusement park here. What fun. No, he's gonna fuck it up. Cause he disappeared as soon as you didn't look at him. My mother and my father were, t- you know, watching us play in this big like, little playground area that was enclosed to like, you know, whatever. It was just for kids. I'm watching this play. All of a sudden, I swear, my mom looked away for a second and goes, where's John? Where's John John? Where's John John? Where's John? Where's my baby? I'm like, fuck again. The fuck? Can we go anywhere? Seriously? What the fuck? He's fine. He's fine. Can I play? Can we? They closed the playground down. P- security came, cornered off the air because they thought he might be kidnapped. My mom's in hysterics. My dad's just like, I don't know what the fuck are we going to do. He keeps getting away. Why can't the evil one get away? Please leave. You will keep the other one. He's nice. <laughs> You're bad. Go. Run, run, run free. Run free. So I'm just like, oh, shit. So this goes on and people are worried and my mom is screaming and all their parents are like, oh my God, I think a child's been kidnapped. They look up to the top of this fucking, whatever, this ginormous like uh, clubhouse wheel thing. I swear it was stories and stories in the air. He's standing there like the devil. He's just standing there. I'm like, oh, there he is. Get to, you know, and everybody saw him. They're like, oh, God, thank God. I'm just pissed at this point because my parents are so wiped out. We had to go. Good wiped out from worrying for it. So that's just, you know, one of the first times I kind of snapped him in the head. And I was not the best brother to him, believe it or not. I was not always great. I I punched him in the face when he was five, when I was five years old and he was a few weeks. I'm not proud of it, but let me say, I didn't know he had such a soft head. The reason I punched him in the face was because he was annoying. He would just sit there, smear food all over him, go, ah, ah, ah. I'm trying to watch TV. Ah. Shut up, shut up, yeah. Ah! So I literally curled my fist and went, I mean, it wasn't like, boom, I went, and he went, blood started to gush out. And he, I guess infants have small faces and barely any bones, who knew? I didn't know, I was five years old. He started bleeding, my mom's like, oh my God, he tried to kill the baby. I'm like, no, I didn't really try to kill him, I just tried to punch him in the face. That didn't sound much better. But I, I it just, like like that, like, you know, ooh, ow, that hurt, wow. I, I thought it was like a cartoon. I don't know what the fuck, he just won't stop bleeding, holy shit. My mom got the bloody Kleenexes, stopped his nosebleed. I was supposed to go on a field trip that day. Not only was I banned from going on the field trip, which I really wanted to go on for some bizarre reason, but um, I had to go to my room. I couldn't go to school, which was actually at that time a punishment for me because I liked school. Like, I don't remember this. I think she you maybe had early onset dementia before, you know, what happened to her. But no, she, she I did like school at that point. And I was like, oh my God, 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 God. She's like, no, not only are you not going to school, these bloody Kleenexes, you're keeping in your drawer until you're 15 years old so you can remember what it crappy thing it was you did to your brother 
okay, okay, whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, whatever, like that. She made me keep those bloody Kleenex. She would always, where are those Kleenexes at? When I was like, getting to be 12, do you still have them? If you threw them away, you're grounded. I'm telling you, I wasn't kidding with you. You think I'm playing with you? At least I've had enough with you. But this one, I'm going to try to make sure it does a little bit better. And, you know, there were a few other times I may have peeled his fingers off monkey bars and he hit the ground and I blamed it on somebody else. I was a psycho. What do you want from me? I'm sorry, but I do love my brother. Don't tell him so. Um, and how he eventually, I really connected with him was I did kind of ignore him. Like there were times, and again, I remember one time in particular, and my mom loved to tell the story forever and ever, where he would not shut up. And it was Saturday morning and there's Saturday morning cartoons on and then Soul Train and I am in, especially for Soul Train because they could dance. So I was sitting there watching shit. And again, my mom's cooking something in the kitchen. And, ah, 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 ah. Shut up. Just shut. He won't shut up. She's like, he's a baby. He's going to cry. Ah, apple tarts for everybody. What a wonderful day. The birds are singing. And I'm like, she's fucking kidding me with this. Fine. He would shut up for a second. Ah, I'm like, that's it. She's not going to do anything. So I am. Can't punch him in the face anymore. Ran upstairs. I got a glass of really, really cold water. I came down. He's in mid going. He's in mid scream. And I dumped it on him. He went, ah. Because he was stunned by the cold water. I'm like, bingo. He shut up for about a minute, like a minute or two. I'm like, sweet. I started watching TV again. He's like going, ah! Ran back up the stairs. Got another glass of ice cold water. Came back, dumped it on his head. He shut the fuck up again. No harm, no foul. I kept doing this for about five to ten minutes. And eventually my mom started thinking something was weird. She's probably thinking, oh my God, the psycho's pinching his nose and trying to kill him. I gotta go in there and check. Because she stopped, she stopped crying all the time and in and out of crying. And she knew something was wrong. The mother's intuition, probably. She came out and she goes, she sees a kid who's sitting there at this point cold and like soaked in water in his crib. She's like, what happened? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Which, of course, every kid that's your go-to, like, I don't know, maybe pee. I don't know. What, up in the air all over himself? I haven't seen his junk. I don't know what he's packing. I don't, I don't care. I don't know. And she discovered my method of quieting it up. And I did try to reason with her as she likes to tell me that at least he was quiet and I had not hit him. Why am I being grounded? Why? What did I, why? I tried to work within your parameters of nonviolence. I don't understand what's, what, what do you want from me? What do you want from me at this point? But the last thing that finally solidified and I got a bond with him that I still have, even though he drives me batshit crazy and we can go into his adult stories. Cause my brother, not the sharpest, tool in the drawer you just not you just my brother will agree with pretty much anything you could tell my brother as long as you present the argument like you know what you're talking about like you know you could say he could know like the holocaust was a horrible bad awful thing and if you know somebody asked him about it just say what do you think about the holocaust that's a horrible awful thing that's off i can't believe that ever happened but if i guarantee you if i went to him and be like well you know in hindsight, I mean, there wasn't mental health back then. Hitler probably had an illness. And, you know, we really kind of have to forgive Hitler for killing six million Jews, I think. Don't you think so? He would honestly go, yeah, you know what? I guess you're right. He'll agree with anything. He'll agree with anything presented in the right form, which scares the shit out of me. He was in a pyramid scheme at this at one point in his early 20s. And I'm like, you're in a pyramid scheme. No, I'm not. I just have to get a new team to make money. And that team will make money. He showed me his chart that was a, I said, Dumb, dumb, dumb shit, come here. Do you not see this is a triangle, also known as a pyramid? It's a pyramid. You're in a fucking pyramid. What kind of dumb shit is this? You always did shit like that. So, not, but, but he's got a heart of gold. He can fix anything. Like, he could figure out anything mechanically where, like I said before, I can't change a tire. He could change a tire and probably change your engine for you. And he doesn't even do that for a living. He's just good at shit like that. But how he solidified being my brother was one day I was kind of bitter. You know, surprise. And I'm sitting there reading, I think, a newspaper. And I actually did read a newspaper. I was a weird kid, like five or six years old at this point, reading a newspaper. And my brother was in one of those swings that just went back and forth like this in the house. Like, I don't even know what you call it, like auto auto swing. It went, ee, ee, not very far. And he's swinging and, ah, ah, and I'm just like, and he hadn't said my name at this point. And, he had, you know, I was just kind of like, oh, whatever. I wasn't that attached. I'm like, oh, maybe we'll get rid of him. Where's the receipt? And so I'm reading and I hear, ah, ah. and then I stop hearing that. And all of a sudden I hear, ah, I look upside at, I look, he's upside down. How he got out of a swing, upside down, somehow maneuvered his body around, but then got his legs caught in me. He looked like he was swinging from a trapeze. He did. He like, ah, ah. I chose to ignore it. I was like, she'll be in here eventually. I'm not fucking, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And I started reading this paper. I'll never forget. He started to go, Bubba hell, Bubba hell, Bubba hell. And I'm like, who the fuck is Bubba? What, what, what is this? This, fuck, do you think he's in prison? I looked, he's like, Bubba, ah, Bubba, ah. 
He was calling me Bubba, which I couldn't understand, but the look in his eyes, even I have kind of sort of hard. I went over, I picked him up, I put him the right way. And my mom was coming in just at that point. And she's like, I'm, she's like, I'm glad you did that. She goes, I was very nice of you to do it. I'm like, don't count on it again, lady. And then I'm like, he was calling me Bubba. And she goes, he wasn't calling you Bubba. He's trying to say the word brother. He was saying brother, but he kept, he would say brother as Bubba. Cause she said, who is this? And he said, my Bubba. And I just fucking melted. And I'm like, oh God, I'm like, I have a brother. Like, for good. And so, you know, eventually we found the woman with the uh, oranges that, you know, we got them from. And we're like, you want to stay in this country, and right? No ice? No ice? Yeah? You agree to sign paper? No, I'm kidding. Like, every, he was adopted with me, and he was the only person, only sibling I had all my life that, as a constant, growing up. And I do care about him. He gets on my fucking nerves. He does the dumbest shit you could ever imagine. I'm sure he's got stories to tell about me. I'll have him killed. I swear to God, he, he better never talk on YouTube, ever. He better never tell anything I've done because he's got dirt on me. You know, yeah, don't give him leverage. I'm just not going to do it. But yeah, he was interesting. And the final story I'll leave you with was one that I never believed was actually real until a neighbor confirmed it. Here's how agile and skilled he was at getting out, getting out of cribs and getting out in general at less, about one years old at this point. Again, net over crib. We had a dog. He had seen or observed the behavior of my father walking the dog a few times, taking it, you leash the dog, take him out the back way, walk the dog. A neighbor calls my mom in the middle of the night and it's snowing out, winter in Chicago. And she's like, hi. Hi, Jean. Yeah, hi, it's your neighbor, it's March. How you doing? Yeah, no, oh, I'll have that, uh, you know, that recipe for absolute, have it upside down cake pretty soon, I know. Oh, did you hear about what Doreen did? She's such a whore. Anyway, oh no, I just wanted to touch base with you and ask you if, did you know that your baby is crawling in a snowstorm and your dog is running around on a leash out front? Just wanted to check. Like, that's normal. You should have ran, I don't why the bitch didn't drop the phone and run out there and pick up the baby and do something about it. She knew us. She was like right across the lane from us. It was like a little like cul-de-sac uh, like townhouse complex. I was like, she didn't, I was like, why would you call and ask if, if you knew that it's normal? I wish my mom would have been like, oh yeah, isn't it like 2 a.m.? Of course, that's his ritual. Right, he's summoning the Dark Lord. Right, I mean, he'll be in shortly and he needs, he needs to find, you know, the portal to hell and then everything will be fine. The fact she has this is normal. He, my mom flips out, runs downstairs, they get him outside, they're trying to figure out, because they went out the front door to figure out what the fuck happened, how the fuck, they actually, I think we're going to blame me at some point, like I threw him outside, which is a good possibility, but not what happened. Here's what he done. We had a dishwasher that was right next to the kitchen door. There was a stool next to the dishwasher. Somehow, maybe he was kind of able to toddle at this point, I don't remember exactly like that. Like, he couldn't walk fully, but he could like, do like, you know, like you know, a drunk Cubs fan, like kind of do one of these for a little bit, crawled downstairs, a flight of stairs, found dog, found leash, put leash attached to the dog, somehow got the dog to go with him, got onto the stool on top of, then crawled onto the dishwasher, undid the top latch lock, undid the second lock, opened the back door, pulled dog, crawled out into a winter storm down more stairs now he crawled up the back fucking way which means he went through a gangway came around the front and back into the courtyard i didn't believe it was real years later i asked his neighbor and he's like oh i'll never forget that i mean <laughs> she, I mean, she's sipping vodka at the time but i believe it. no she's like you know she's like when do you see a baby with a dog in winter i mean she i don't when i asked her eventually why didn't you ever like why didn't you just kind of believe this was normal or something? She goes, she's like, I thought he was seeing things. I mean, wouldn't you? If you saw a baby walking with a dog in a winter storm, you would go, oh, I'm high right now. That's what's going on. But that pretty much encapsulates him. Like he can't sit still anywhere. He is always off. He is just gone. I mean, there would be times when, you know, we shared a car, which was a nightmare. Well, the car back by six. Dude, the car better be back by six. It's midnight and he's in, the, in Indiana. I'm not even bullshitting you. What the fuck? What the fuck? This is before cell phones. He, you know, just, well, before good cell phones, like flip phones, like, oh, I'm losing you. No, dude, I can't. Just fuck off. <laughs> he just did shit like that. But yeah, so that's the story on my brother. And uh, that's it. That's the story time for this month because I'm worn out even telling it. 
Uh, I am going to put up another video probably later today or tomorrow on JVTV2. And the reason I'm going to put on two and not on here is I'm almost sure it'll get me some hate speech thing. I'm almost positive. So trust me, even though it totally doesn't have any, it's just the subject matter itself. So look out for that.